All right, if there was one airline taking advantage of these new fuel-efficient planes from Boeing, it's Norwegian Air. CEO Bjorn Koos joins me now. Great to see you here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, thank you. So you primarily fly the new Boeing 787 Dreamliner. Uh, there it is. We have a picture of it. I've been on this plane. It's an incredible experience for passengers. Why do you like it as an operator? Uh, as an operator, first of all, it's a beautiful airplane and it's so uh, nice to fly as a passenger, but it has a tremendous low cost, mm -hmm. very low fuel burn. Uh, oh. So, so uh, it's, it's uh, absolutely the best aircraft that we as a low cost operator can fly. Um, price though on this, it allows you to get some lower costs for consumers. So New York to London on a 787, I'm talking about six, seven hundred dollars round trip. That's right. That's right. But then you have to fly a new aircraft, <laughs> otherwise you won't make it. <laughs> yeah. So you replace these every, what, seven, eight years, you said? Yeah, we should. Uh, Dreamliners will last maybe uh, 10, 12 years. Uh, then you should start replacing them. But uh, because uh, all the airplanes, they have tremendous high technical costs. Now, this is a sort of double aisle plane. It's what we traditionally see flying to Europe. But you're actually rolling out the 737 MAX, we have a picture of that one. It's a single aisle plane and it has the range to get you to Europe. You're flying that out of Stewart Airport in sort of upstate New York. It's about an hour and a half from New York City. Tell us about fares on this kind of plane. The lowest fare on this uh, plane uh, is $100 over to Europe. Wow. Or $99. And, and uh, the reason why we can fly it is uh, at that low cost is because we fly it out of uh, secondary airports mm -hmm. and, or uh, smaller airports, smaller airports here also here in the US like Stewart, like uh, Providence. Uh, so it's much easier, much faster turnaround, can have a high utilization on the aircraft and the aircraft has actually incredible good cost. But, but I got to tell you, he, from New York City to Stewart, it's about an hour and a half drive a $200 Uber ride. So if I take an Uber up there, I mean, it's essentially costing me more than the ticket. I mean, how are New Yorkers, people in these big cities grappling with that distance, especially getting there? Well, it costs you $20. You can take the bus. It will take you one hour and 15 minutes. And But coming into uh, uh, airports like Stewart, it will take you 15 minutes to go through immigration. So it's hmm. uh, no queues there. Interesting. So you make up the time by getting through the airport faster. Yeah, that's right. Let me also ask you as an airline operator, because you don't fly the, the Airbus A380, that's that triple-decker plane, but a lot of big carriers do. There's worry that you know there's no more life for the A380, it's too big. Bigger is not better for an airline operator? In other words, if you can fit more passengers, that's not necessarily a good thing? No, but, and you should always think about uh, yeah, weight. Weight is cost, and uh, yeah, then you, you should... Uh, you, uh, use uh, actually uh, composite aircraft like uh, the Dreamliner, very efficient, 344 seats, it's absolutely brilliant. Now with these low fares though, people should expect to pay for perks that they might take for granted on traditional carriers like meals and drinks, is that right? No, but you should uh, do it another way. You should uh, let people uh, select what they want to have. We yeah. have a, an IFE equipment right in front of you with a snack bar, or mm. yeah, you can order drinks, you can order beer, whatever you like. Uh, it's different from person to person. So why should you pay for uh, the, your neighbor's drink? Right. So if the guy next to me orders you know, two champagnes, I don't want to pay for that. No, that's right. <laughs> why should you? So you're a European-based carrier. Let me ask you about Ryanair. They're, of course, dealing with a pilot shortage. What was your reaction to that? Is that, is that something you worry about at Norwegian? Yeah, we have had that uh, yeah, previously in this summer, so I know uh, it, it hits and uh, because we had somewhat delays on our maxes uh, that also gave us a pilot shortage. So uh, that, uh, that is terrible for the passengers. For the passengers, it's, it's a headache because mm. they have planned their vacation and we need to get them on the vacation. Right. Now, as an airline CEO, obviously you have to look you know, decades out into the future. What did you make of the United Technologies Rockwell Collins deal? Because that is expected, perhaps, to push up prices for Boeing planes. I mean, that's obviously something you have to watch closely. Yeah, we always watch closely on, uh, on all these uh, things. We, you really have to keep down uh, on the cost and uh, you have to 
watch every detail uh, when flying a passenger because the passenger uh, you should be uh, able to fly the passenger on the low fares. All right, quickly before we let you go, what is next for you? I mean, are you st trying to target a certain audience, maybe millennials with these low fares? What what is it about Norwegian you want people to flock to for? I think we like to open more uh, crew bases and more destinations here in the U.S. I, I think we have 700 uh, fantastic crew members here in the U.S. We like to uh, open more crew bases, like to fly to um, more places, uh, flying tourists into the U.S. and fly, giving the Americans the ability to fly to other cities in Europe. Mm. All right. Bjorn Kuss, we'll leave it there. I want to see the 780, well, that's the 737 MAX, but all these incredibly new fuel-efficient Boeing planes, they're absolutely amazing. Thanks for joining us. Thank you. All right, I'm Scott Gam, and you're watching The Street.